Hit A, X, and enter. That will select everything, then delete all of it. Then hit 7 to go into the top view. Then go Shift A to add image background image. This image of Clippy I just found on Google. Do Shift A to add a curve and do a Bezier curve. Hit Tab to edit the curve and just scale it down with S. Selecting the different control handles, hit G to grab them and then R to rotate them and move them around and align them with Clippy. You can scale them to drag the two handles out or you can grab the individual handle and hit G to drag it around. For more complicated parts, you can right click and hit subdivide and that will take the two nodes that you have selected and put one in between them. This will give you more control in between the nodes that you currently have. To keep adding nodes, click a node that you have already on there, then hit E to extrude, which will create a new node out of the end of it. Take that and keep dragging it all the way around Clippy, and then hitting subdivide as you need to add more control nodes in between. Once you have it pretty well lined up, click the Curve tab on the right side. Under Geometry, add a little bit of depth to the bevel. In my case, just with the scale I'm using, 0.4 seems to work pretty well, but adjust it to fit whatever size of image you ended up having. Now that the curve actually has some thickness to it, adjust it again just to make sure that it lines up with the image in the background. There is a checkbox here that says fill caps that I swear used to fill in the end of this curve, but that doesn't seem to be working in this version. I don't know if I missed something or if it's just a bug. Now to turn it into a mesh that you can actually use for printing, go Object, Convert to, and then say Mesh from Curve. And that will create a series of vertices that approximate the curve that you had. Hold down Alt to select the ring around the end, then hit E to extrude it, and then Scale 0. We'll scale all of those vertices together. Now you can hit A to select everything, right click, and go Merge by Distance and that will remove all of the duplicate vertices that you have on the ends. So this seals off the ends, but if you notice they look kind of rounded, that's because the smoothing is trying to make it look like one nice clean mesh. But you actually want nice sharp edges there. So what we're gonna do is force those edges to actually uh, be duplicated so the smoothing doesn't try to clean them up. So we're gonna go over to the modifier tab, which is that little wrench, go add modifier and go to edge split. And any sort of angle in the mesh that is above that split angle will actually be duplicated along that edge. So you don't get any other tools trying to smooth that edge over. Modify the split angle so that the main body ends up being smooth, but the ends stay flat. Now that you have that, you want this to be even smoother. You don't want to be able to see any sort of facets or edges inside of this. So also under the modifier tab, we're going to go add modifier subdivision surface. By adding this, this will add a lot more geometry to your model. So it'll, the file will be bigger and it'll be more detailed, but it will also print a lot nicer and you shouldn't see any little vertices or flat spaces. Now we're going to work on the eyes. Hit Shift A and go to Mesh to add a mesh and then add a UV sphere. There's two different kinds of spheres, UV and ICO, and it's just how the vertices are laid out by default. Luckily, a UV sphere has basically concentric circles that go all the way around it, 
which works really well for eyes because you have a pupil, which is a circle inside of the eye, which is another circle. Once you've added the body, move the body so that it's centered on the eye and rotate it so that it's roughly in line with where the eye is angled. Doing this makes it so that you can scale along the axes of the eye, even though the eye is turned. Once you're in there, hit tab to go into edit mode and then scale. Y would scale along global Y, but if you hit scale YY, hit Y twice, it will scale along the local Y axis of the eye, which is basically up and down. So scale the mesh along X and Y to get it to line up with the size of the eye. And then if you look at the side view, you can scale it to make it much flatter. So you don't need something to be really, really thick. Now that it's roughly the right size, you can go into edit mode, hold down alt again to do a loop select and select the edges that roughly line up with where the pupil is. Do this with both eyes. Once you have the pupil selected, you can hit P and selection, and that will remove that chunk of the mesh out into its own body. This makes it into a separate part that you can 3D print separately really easily. Select just the pupils, hit tab to edit. In 2.8, you can edit both of them at the same time, which you can't do with previous versions of Blender. Select everything with A, then hit E to extrude, and that will let you pull the newly extruded vertices down into the eyeballs. Then do scale Z zero, and that will make them nice and flat so they don't have the curvature that the pupils have. Do the exact same thing with the eyes themselves. So hit tab to go into edit mode for both eyes, then hit hold down alt and select the edges all the way around the pupils hit e to extrude them down you'll have to hit e z because they're not a solid face to extrude it down up at the top you want to enable snapping and vertex snapping this will make it so that you can extrude it straight down and then select the bottom part of the pupil and snap it to that. That will make the two bodies line up perfectly so that when you 3D print them, they should slot together really nicely. Select one of the pupils and add an edge split, and that will have the same effect that it did uh, with the main body. Also add a subdivision surface, which makes it smoother and adds more definition to it, more vertices, which will make it print smoother. You want to do this for all four pieces of the eyes now. But if you select multiple and you add modifiers, it will only add modifiers for the active element, not all of them like you might think it will. Once that one body is set up the way you want it to be, select all of the other bodies that you want to have the same set of modifiers and make sure to select that one body last. That makes it the active element. Now you can do control L, which will link any features of that body that you want. And you can tell it to link modifiers. And that will set up all of the other bodies to have the same set of modifiers that the active body does. So it's an easy way to apply multiple modifiers to multiple bodies all at the same time. To do the eyebrows, we're gonna go Shift A to add a mesh and we're gonna add a UV sphere again. Like before, 
move the mesh in object mode so it roughly lines up with the eyebrow. We're going to rotate it as well so that the tips, the two end points of this sphere, are lined up more or less with where the eyebrows are. Now go into edit mode. We're gonna take half of the sphere, making sure not to select the equator of it. And then we can hit X and delete. Now select the equator and hit E to extrude and start following along the eyebrow. We're gonna go E to extrude and then scale to shrink it down. E to extrude, scale over and over again, all the way along the length of the eyebrow. Once you get to the end, go scale zero. Then you need to hit A, then right click and merge by distance. And that will merge all of the vertices that are at the very tip of the eyebrow into a single vertex. Once you have this eyebrow modeled, hit tab to get out of edit mode, then shift D to duplicate it. Then using G and R, you can move it with G to get it to where the other eyebrow is. And you can hit R to rotate it so that it lines up with how the other eyebrow is set up. Since the two eyebrows are different sizes, you're going to need to select one of the eyebrows and go tab to edit and modify the geometry so that it lines up with the new eyebrow. If you're planning on gluing these together, you need to make sure that you have a space in one body for the other one to glue into. To do that in Blender, you can use Booleans. They can be finicky sometimes, but if you take your time, you can usually make them work pretty well. So we're gonna select the body and then under the modifiers tab, we're gonna add a Boolean modifier. We need to select difference so that it will remove one from the other and then go through and select both eyebrows and both eyes. To make this much, much easier when you're doing this, make sure to go in and actually name your bodies. We're up to seven or so bodies now, which does make it kind of tricky to keep track of them just by their object name. As you remove one body from another, you can hide that body and you'll see the indent of it is missing from the actual paperclip body. If you look, some of the edges aren't super clean. To do that, just add another edge split and another edge split will go through and duplicate those vertices to make them nice sharp edges and Blender won't try to smooth them over. To add a base, we're just gonna go Shift A, Mesh, Circle. To add a circle in, move it so it's roughly around the bottom. And then tab to go into edit mode. First, we're going to go E to extrude and then scale zero to bring the vertices into the center. Hit A, merge vertices by distance. We'll remove all the vertices in the center. So now this is one solid face. Then we're just gonna go through and hit E to extrude down, scale a little bit just to give it kind of a bevel and then E again to scale down just to give it a little bit of thickness. I'm gonna select the whole thing and just hit scale Z to scale it down because we don't need it quite that wide because Clippy is not very thick. Modify the base so that it feels to fit pretty much where you want it to and then move it so that the bottom is in slightly, maybe a third. You want a little bit of it in there so that when you glue it, it fits strong. 
Now we're gonna go through the same process that we did for all of the other bodies. We're gonna add an edge split and we're gonna add a subdivision surface, which will give it nice sharp edges, but also a decent amount of geometry for printing. We're also gonna go through and give it a Boolean and we're going to remove the body from the base. So under Boolean, you need it to be difference and the object will be body. And that will hollow out a little spot for the body to recess into the base. You might also need to add another edge split in here just to make these edges look a little bit nicer. Now that Clippy is modeled, we need to export him so that we can 3D print him. You could try to 3D print this all in one shot. Problem with that is it's going to be only a single material. That could be okay if you're planning on painting it, but in my case I have different material colors that I can print with, so I don't need to worry about painting. If you go File, Export, STL, under Batch Mode make sure you choose Object. That will export each body as its own STL file. So you don't need to go through and select one at a time and export them and name them whatever. It will name them file name and then body name. So you can do a mass export and then you have all of the different objects that you need to be printing. Of course, I forgot to actually record 3D printing any of this, but here's kind of a gross picture of that. I printed the eyes in white, the eyebrows and the pupils in black, and then the body in gray. Go through with some 220 grit sandpaper and sand off all of the support material that might be still stuck to them. You can use a knife and some patience as well, uh, but of course be careful with the knife. To fit the pupils in the eyes, 3D printers have kind of a loose tolerance on them unless you have a super high-end one. So the pupils won't just fit into the eyes right away, or very likely won't. So you'll have to go through and sand around them and just keep trying over and over again until they press fit in. I didn't need to glue these because mine were pretty tight, but if yours went the other way and your pupil was a little smaller than intended, you might need to glue these in. Go around with some super glue and glue everything in together. In this case, the pieces aren't super large, so you probably don't need any activator, but if you ended up doing something like this and you had some very large pieces that were fitting together, activator can save you a lot of headache. I'm